Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I will start now. Good morning, everybody. Okay, I will wait for a few um, admission to come through. So we have with us um, all the speakers. I'm just going to wait for a few more seconds for the administrator to admit a few more people coming in. Um, we have around one twenty to one thirty here already. Okay, so you can you can start, yeah. Yeah, because the uh, notification keeps coming up on my pop up. <laughs> it's, it's quite. Right, uh, let me change the setting for a while. Okay, thanks. Because it's yeah, quite. Yeah, so I can start. All right, thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very 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 good morning to all UM colleagues. Uh, thank you for joining us in our special webinar and sharing session forum today. Um, this is a very current topic and I believe um, very relevant to all of us right now. We, we have with us right now um, all four panelists and uh, I would like to introduce them. Okay, our first panel on this forum, how to teach in a hybrid learning environment. It's a very current topic. We will start with Dr. Uh, Associate Professor Dr. Faradina Yusuf, our director, current director of ADAC. She will be, um, she's from Faculty of Education and she'll be sharing with us mainly on the topic of um, hybrid learning and how do we define it. And then we have uh, Dr. Zahiruddin Fitri, Deputy Director, E-Learning Innovation and Technology of ADAC. Dr. Zahir, you can't see him on the screen, but I believe he's there. Uh, mostly, Dr. Zahir will be sharing on the technology in hybrid learning and what to consider in your setup. We also have with us Dr. Juliana Usman, the former head of Department of Biomedical Engineering. Dr. Juliana, thank you for joining us. Dr. Juliana will be sharing on uh, how she, I think Department of Biomedical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering is the only department that tried out, to actually try out um, hybrid learning. So we are very honored to have Dr. Juliana with us today to share how it is from an administrator's and uh, student perspective. We will see how that goes. And we also have IR Dr. Mas Sahidayana Mukhtar head of UM STEM Center and also from uh, the same department as myself and Dr. Juliana by Medical Engineering. So we hope that we are able to share some of the research findings and um, lessons that we can learn about hybrid learning. So myself, I'm uh, Aza. I'm from ADAC. I'm the head of R&D unit and the acting head of TNL Innovation Unit in ADAC. So I'm very pleased to chair this session for all of you today. I invite any, any, any one of you who has some experience of conducting a hybrid learning class, hybrid learning session in whatever mode before this, who has some experience to just raise up your hand or kindly note it somewhere in the chat section. So we could also invite you. I can see Dr. Chan, if, um, Dr. Chan is also here. Dr. Chan is one of our um, recipient of UM Lighter um, grant that did uh, a project on hybrid learning. So uh, perhaps towards the middle or towards the end of the session, we will also, if Dr. Chan doesn't mind, um, invite to share and some of his findings or some tips or lessons learned. Yeah? So we want this to be a sharing session. None of us are experts, I have to tell you. None of we don't want to claim ourselves as experts. We do not want to make that statement. But um, we know that uh, the university, University Malaya, our beloved university, is going to open the campus for all students to come in this coming semester in October. Um, and with that, we all know that we are going to do hybrid learning. But the question is how to do it? So that's hence the forum today. The topic is how to teach in a hybrid learning environment. So to start with that, 
maybe it's time for me to invite Dr. Faradina Yusof um, to give one sentence on the definition before we start on the longer. I want to have one round to introduce um, each and every um, speaker and a, a, a gist of what you're um, delivering today. So Dr. Farah, please. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Very good, every, very good morning everyone. Thank you Dr. Azza for um, inviting all of us here. Um, I am Farah Dina Yusuf. Uh, I'm from Faculty of Education and also currently Director of ADAC. Um, I will be talking today from the perspective of my experience being a hybrid learner about 14 years ago, which back in 2007, when I was uh, studying PhD at Iowa State University, USA. Back then, uh, we already experienced and been using uh, hybrid learning for our uh, postgraduate course. Um, but the technology that we use quite different from what we are going to talk about or introduce today. So uh, that's what we are trying to um, sharing our experiences here. Okay, about the definition of hybrid learning, should I um, stay for the next round or just mention today because it's in a slide? Uh, maybe very short one before the slide comes in for the next round. Okay, so hybrid, okay, hybrid learning definition uh, can be defined in many ways. But for University of Malaya, we have decided that hybrid learning meaning that both learners, were the on-campus and also online learners, will be synchronously communicating with the course instructor okay, within real time. Okay, that's the definition, unofficial definition. Okay, we will, we will stop there. Okay, we'll stop there and we'll have a uh, kupasan lebih lanjut in the next round. Thank you so much, Dr. Farah. I would like now to invite uh, Dr. Zahir Udin. You can see Dr. Zahir is in a setting of high learning. Hello, Dr. Zahir. He's in uh, Fakulti of Alam Bina. Okay, Dr. Zahir need to unmute dulu. Dr. Zahir, you need to unmute yourself. Uh, no, no. Clear. We we hear we hear noises, but not butiran perkataan. <laughs> So I'll try and start that out. Uh, uh, in the meantime, maybe uh, someone can go in and uh, talk about uh, what she wants to do. Okay. Alright. Can you hear you well now, okay? Azza? Um, now we can hear what you're saying, Dr. Zahir. Um, Dr. Zahir, we can hear you quite quite better now, a lot better now. All right, okay, thank you very much. So, uh, 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 in the room, I actually have uh, uh, one, uh, one lecture here as well. So, I was talking to my, I didn't really uh, pay attention to you guys. So, what was it that you were saying? Like, Uh, what was it that you were saying? Uh, your, your mic is muted. Sorry, Dr. Zahir, what was your question? Uh, what was it that you were saying just now? Uh, just uh, one sentence to introduce what you are going to talk about, the gist of what you're going to talk about in this forum. Just introduce one, one sentence before we go to the um, main one. Uh, in uh, the session that I'm going to lead, uh, probably for about um, half an hour or slightly more, uh, I'm going to talk about um, the kind of technology uh, that you need to have, you should have in uh, hybrid learning. And since I'm in uh, 
at lecture C1 in particular science, uh, we have already sort of set up some of the uh, proof of concept uh, equipment uh, that university uh, is going to purchase or procure for, for the project. Uh, it, it will not be exactly like this. Uh, there will be differences so depending on how uh, the faculty themselves uh, make their uh, own uh, procurement. Uh, it will be something uh, like uh, what you you're going to see uh, here today. All right. Okay, good. Thank you so much, Dr. Sahih. We we'll, we we'll, we'll look forward to hearing more from you after, uh, in a while, yeah. So, um, Dr. Mas, silakan. Dr. Mas, uh, we cannot hear you yet. Belum lagi. Lagi sekali. Cuba. Uh, okay, we can... Um, not yet, Dr. Mas. We cannot hear you yet, Dr. Mas. <laughs> not yet, Dr. Mas. <laughs> okay, I will invite uh, Dr. Juliana first in the meantime. Dr. Mas, uh, try, try adjust sikit, tak dengar. Uh. Okay, uh, we move to Dr. Juliana. Okay, Assalamualaikum and good morning. Um, first of all, thank you Dr. Azhar and Adek for actually inviting me. Um, as Dr. Azhar mentioned, I'm, I'm uh, mantan H, like the former head actually. So, um, she invited me because I think I was told that we were the one uh, had the opportunity to actually conduct hybrid class uh, in semester two. So what she wants me to do is actually to share um, our experience um, when we conducted that hybrid classes uh, during that semester two. Um, it might be different um, for every situation, but this, like, as I said, it's just a sharing session. So that's what I'll be doing in today with you all. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you, Dr. Juliana. So hopefully the um, context that uh, we have, if you realise, we do not have any speaker from outside of University of Malaya. This is very um, uh, intentional because we want everything that we are talk about, talking about today is going to be very contextualised towards what we can do and what we have done as University of Malaya um, academics. So. Hello, uh, Dr. Yes, there you go, Dr. Mas. Silakan, Dr. Mas. Okay. <laughs> uh, but later, I'll fix my thing. Okay, um, so what I'll be sharing is um, maybe some findings or some background study that we have done, uh, especially on to the social presence, cognitive presence, and also the teaching presence of hybrid learning. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dr. Mas. So, um, Let's start with our um, first round of uh, definition of hybrid learning. How do we actually define hybrid learning in the UM context? For that, I would like to invite Dr. Farah if you want to share your screen. Okay. I uh, will share my screen. Sekejap, ya. Can you see the screen? Yes, we can, Dr. Farah. 
Okay. And Would you like to press a uh, slideshow? It's okay. not in show mode yet. Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay. The screen is still not on slideshow, Dr. Farah, yeah? Okay. Wait, once it's yeah. All right. So All right. Um, you're uh, you're muted again, Dr. Vara. Okay, boleh dengar sekarang? Ha, boleh. Okay. 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 So, uh, for now, University Malaya has not officially uh, launched or have the uh, official definition of hybrid learning. So we have been checking with several PTJ, especially our TNCA. And this is the hybrid learning definition that we wanted to introduce today. Okay. Hybrid learning refers to the combination of teaching and learning conducted physically at the learning location and online with the teaching staff in real time synchronously. In hybrid learning, the teaching staff will need to facilitate both groups simultaneously. So in Bahasa Melayu, ia adalah merujuk kepada gabungan PDP yang dijalankan secara bersemuka fizikal di lokasi pembelajaran dan secara dalam talian bersama tenaga pengajar dalam masa nyata atau segera uh, synchronous. Dalam pembelajaran hybrid, tenaga pengajar perlu memudah cara pembelajaran bagi kedua-dua kumpulan pelajar secara serentak. Okay, I know the sentence quite long so I'm going to um, dissect it now. Okay, and give you uh, the visual representation. Okay, if you look at the definition again, so it means that there will be two group of students in the uh, learning environment. So one group of students are students who are present physically on site. Okay, so they will be in the lecture hall, in the auditorium, bilik kuliah, okay, or even in your lab if you are teaching in the lab. There's another group of students who will be also joining your teaching and learning processes online via Zoom, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams. Okay, so bear in mind that these two students are also going to be interacting with one another and also with the course instructor, the lecturer. Okay, so the lecturer will be physically on site teaching with the on-site students as well as with the online students. Okay, the teaching and learning will happen during the official class schedule. So let's say your class schedule has been said to be on Monday, 27th September, uh, 10 to 11 a.m. So all three people or three group of people will be there from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. to do the teaching and learning processes. Okay, so um, if this is not too clear, okay, this is um, how it will supposed to look like, okay, in ideal environment. So you will see that in one classroom, there will be one instructor, okay, and there will be a group of online students who will be joining the class via the online meeting platform and also physical on-site students. Okay, if you look at the condition of the physical on-site students, you can see that they are following the SOP. They are wearing masks, um, they have the physical distancing and so on. Okay, we'll talk about uh, how hybrid learning will be operated in UM later. But this is the um, gambaran of how it should look like, okay, based on the division that we have. Okay, Dr. Aza, should I, I have a slide from Prof. Aziz. Uh, okay, maybe this is a time for to share. Okay, um, during the Mashuarat 
Mike Chancellor bersama Dekan dan Pengarah on 14th of September 2021. Our Timbalan Nat Chancellor, Pembangunan, uh, Professor Engineer Dr. Abdul Aziz have shared the slide and this is how it should be uh, the next semester. Okay. So you can see that for all courses university, the SHE course, the BI and others, and also students who are uh, who cannot be present in our country and they are overseas, they will be totally following the class from online. Okay. Uh, while other courses, for example, Cursus Teras Faculty, Tutorial, Elective Courses, Research-based, um, Lab-based and all of that will be conducted physical on site, on campus. Okay. So, uh, bear in mind that the number of students who will be physical on campus, okay, it's based on the capacity of the space in your in your faculty. Okay, for example, if the maximum capacity is uh, one hundred students, okay, in normal condition, now there's only thirty students will be. Dr. Farah, you are muted. Tertekan tadi. Okay, students who have not been vaccinated or have been vaccinated for the second dose but have not yet um, go through or, or melepasi the 14 days, um, so they can't be physical, they have to be online. I think I will stop here first, Dr. Azah. Okay, Dr. Farah, thank you so much for your um, clarification on the definition and what's expected by the university. Okay, we will uh, now invite Dr. Zahir to uh, share with us on the technical aspect. Dr. Zahir? So he's uh, live from Alam Bina, eh? Fakulti Alam Bina, Dr. Zahir. you guys from lecture room C1. Yes, but with a little noise, with with a little um, buzzes <laughs> like uh, that. Um, I'm not sure what causes the, the buzz. Oh, but it's so, okay, we, we can uh, hear you, we can hear you. Probably the echo. Um, yeah, but, uh, there's no there's no that it's not seem to actually turn off the echo from the front. I mean, uh, but can you hear me well, hopefully? We can hear you reasonably well. Okay, all right. Uh, hopefully that will surprise. Um, so I, I, I think that uh, actually the highlights uh, one important thing. Uh, and I'm going to uh, uh, do that uh, after uh, I start my presentation. Can you see my presentation? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, we can. All right, thank you very much. So, this works. Somebody took control. Actually, uh, joining you from um, uh, Faculty of uh, Science, um, uh, Lecture Room C1. Uh, so this is actually the uh, it's going to be the showcase um, uh, facility for uh, hybrid learning and as well for uh, remote learning. Uh, because remote, uh, uh, and then uh, what you can actually see is that uh, I took this picture. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We can't see any slides, or we we can't we, we can't hear. Can't hear, and I cannot see any slides. Okay. Uh, for those who, uh, assalamualaikum. Sorry, 
to interrupt. Uh, for those who can't see the slide, maybe you can go out first and come in back. Um, uh, I can't hear uh, Dr. Zahid clearly. It's like lacking. Uh, right, we, we are fixing that right now. Okay. Thank you. Can you see my slide? Or at least um, for the majority of you, can you see my slide? I exited and I can see, but I'm not sure about others. I, I can't see and I can't hear can't either. See anything. Boleh nampak, Dr. Zahir? <laughs> Boleh okay, see the slide. Okay, Assalamualaikum. See the slide. Saya tak nampak slide. Suara pun macam putus-putus uh, ataupun dia punya beat tu terlalu tinggi. Alright, so, yang tak nampak slide, uh, minta keluar balik dan masuk balik. Boleh? Okay. Okay. Uh, sebab yang lain nampak. Saya dah masuk tapi tak nampak lagi view. Saya pun baru keluar dan masuk semula masih tak nampak slide. Sampai oh. dah keluar dan masuk. Yeah. Yeah. Tak nampak, nampak juga. Nampak juga Can ya. you answer and share back since uh, Dian tak nampak? Uh, there could be actually problem issues with uh, your Wi-Fi at home. No, uh, I don't think so. Uh, uh, we are the campus. I, I think I think there is a confusion here. The, the slide that you are uh, showing us bukan gambar kerusi tu eh. Maybe you can uh, uh, go to another or the, the next or previous slide then about uh, last and open your slide. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, few, uh, a moment ago. So this is the uh, uh, the what the doctor sees in uh, uh, the classroom. Yeah, so the, Sorry, the sound quality is really bad. It's hard to make out what you're saying, Zahi, and I still can't see the slides. It's black. My okay. screen is black. So probably it's it's your face. Yes, me too. Same yes, here. agree. No, definitely not my Wi-Fi. Yes, uh, come in. Yeah, same here. Doctor Aza, yes. Doctor Zahi, can we like take a ten-minute break? Okay. Uh, and we we figure this out first. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Will you, Doctor Zahi? Okay. Ten minutes break. Uh, shall we take a complete break? Okay. So we're going to take a 10 minutes break um, and we'll continue after that, yeah? So we'll, we're not going to do any fill up at this time point, um, uh, at this point in time. So we will wait for 10 minutes until they are able to figure that out. Uh, Dr. Azza, are you able to hear my voice now? Yes, I am. Okay. Oh, then, uh, then. Uh, All right, thank you. So this is what we would expect. Okay, I think this... Um, Umu, is it okay if we keep chat around this time? Fill up the ten minutes. Nothing formal, but just to throw in. Boleh? Oh, or do you? Or do you yeah, correct. This or do you want to? We are going to expect. Do you want to Yes. Or do you want to like just proceed to maybe for my presentation and then we can come back for Dr. Zahi's presentation and let's see if others can see my when I share my screen. Okay. Okay, let's see ah. Dr. Mas punya screen dulu. Ah, we, we try uh, lah. Okay, yeah. those who may have left and come back in, um, oh. uh, yeah, we we stopped for Dr. Zahir's session. So, Dr. Zahir's uh, main content hasn't been delivered yet. We want to try out uh, and see Dr. Mas punya session, Dr. Mas punya round. Okay, are you able to see my Dr. screen? Mas, yeah, everyone? Okay, thank you Dr. Mas, silakan. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. I can, okay. Dr. Mas. How about the others? I can. Oh, my my boleh. Yes. No. Okay. Tak nampak. Tak nampak. No, I can't. No. Tak nampak. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. ada yang nampak dan ada yang tidak nampak. Yes. Uh, uh, Mas. All three times come back. Dia dah keluar dua kali. Kenapa? Saya see. masih tak nampak. Okay. Dr. Mas, is it possible for you to share the slide with us? So, we can share in the chat? Yeah, I... 
Okay, but I think uh, what happened is uh, when we share the slides, there's two modes. One is the MST mode where it's presenting mode and another one I shared from the, the window mode. Let me try to use the window mode and see if you can uh, see my screen now. Is it okay? Are you able to see my screen now? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. right? Yes. So I, yeah, yes. I think to solve Dr. Zahir's problem, he has to share using his uh, window mode. Don't share via MS Team because when he share via MS Team, well, some of us might have a different check. setting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Azad, am I? Yeah, share the window. Check slide sekarang. Window, window. Uh, yeah. Mm -mm. yeah, this is the window setting. So, yeah. you should be able to see this uh, as usual when you use others, Google Me or Zoom and so on. Uh -huh. So, jangan guna the MS Team punya setting because uh, not all can have the view of that. Mm. Sekarang kami nampak your WhatsApp web. Eh? Oh, ya. Yeah. <laughs> Semua orang nampak mas punya WhatsApp web. Ya, WhatsApp. Nak minta mas share <laughs> your um, slide using the Windows mode. Okay, let's try that. All right. Now, okay? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. I want to know out of all the audience, uh, if you cannot still see the screen, please raise up your hand. If any of you still cannot see Dr. Mas on your screen, can you please raise up your hands? We are doing some diagnosis here. We can see now, I think. So everybody can see now. So the trick is yes. maybe we, some of us may have a different setting. So yeah. So the to solve that is not to share using the MS team sharing mm. but to share the window, the whole thing. But have to be careful lah, jangan letak apa-apa sensitif <laughs> kat belakang. Sorry, that was that was my mistakes lah. Okay, uh, so do you want me to continue or you want to try to Dr. Zahis again? Because I think we, we told, you told the others to get a break kan? Uh, so I think we just wait lah. So at least we know how to solve this mm, viewing thing so now lah. Alright. Technical sharing, okay. Dr. Mas. All right. <laughs> Can I just ask a question in the meantime? Yes, please. Dr. Nujana here, law faculty. Ah, so uh, kalau nak buat hybrid, I think the infrastructure has to be in place, isn't it? Yeah. Which means in each room and in each day one kuliah. Yes. Uh, Dr. Jana, maybe I will let Dr. Zahir to address that during his. Will uh, do. Yeah, thank you. Boleh ya? Okay, thank you so much. Dr. Zahir, if you're trying to speak, you are muted. Yeah. yeah, but your sound quality is still iffy. Yes. Okay. But we can see the slide. I hope everybody can see the slide. Can everyone see the slide now? Yes, I can. Okay. Yeah, boleh. Okay, thank you yeah. so much. Thank you, Dr. Mas. Thank you, Dr. Mas, for that troubleshooting. Okay, good. Let's try to so, uh, okay. listen from Dr. Zahir now. Yep. Alright, so uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, so, uh, 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 clear. The sound quality is so poor. Yes, we can't hear. Uh, Dr. Zahir. To figure out his mic, boleh? Tataza, you muted. Tataza, you're still muted. Can we proceed with the mask? Uh, put it around. Yes. Can we proceed with the mask? All right. Okay. All right. 
So I'll be sharing again the screen. Ah, uh, let me share. Okay, now I think everyone should be able to hear uh, to see my screen, right? Yes, Dr. Mas, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. So I'm not going to put in a slide share because I don't know what will happen later. So okay, on my part, uh, because I, I'm also heading the UM STEM Center. So actually, while we are also doing our STEM and also like TVET uh, research and also study, we found out that this hybrid learning is very much related to what is not only happening to in our universities, but also other universities, other institutions, including the schools, the polytechnic, college communities, and other universities from the overseas as well. And we found that, I, I think because this, we are not from education background, but I think like what Dr. Faradina was saying, hybrid learning is not new. Hybrid learning has been conducted by others for quite some time. It's just like for us now, because of the pandemic, it's becoming like they speed up the process of like conducting hybrid learning. So I'm just uh, uh, taking this uh, definition. It's not my definition. It's by Shelley et al. 2012, where she defined or this research defined that whatever hybrid learning causes is any courses that combines face-to-face -face instruction with online instructions and you you see like this is what I think what we are going to uh, the universities, especially on the technical part, because in terms of us to move towards the hybrid learning, we need to have like a varieties of instructional strategies, including all the facilities that we have, the videos, the webcast, webinars, anything that mobile device, anything or software that we can use for us to empower this hybrid learning. Okay, so um, so in my part, through this, uh, what we call like a background or we like literature study or study that we've conducted, is actually meant for STEM and TVET, but we found out that uh, in order for us to get effective hybrid learning, we need to have these three important elements, social presence, because so, because we have two types of students and uh, like looking at us, one of them looking at us physically, and one of us looking at uh, look, looking at us from the camera view. So this the the students who are looking at us from this online version, they need to be able they are, to see to be able to feel that they are also present in our class. Uh, so they are also similar to the real people or real students who are actually inside physically in the physically inside the class. And number two. Both students, not only the physical, also the online student need to co have their cognitive presence. Means that they have to be able to understand what we are teaching, be able to communicate with us and uh, come up with a new idea. So to show that they, are, they, are, they understand and they, they are uh, means like inside the courses without only like uh, be there, turn off the camera and they just listen. Okay, and, and the third one, they also need to know that we are there. The lecturers are there. <laughs> so uh, through whatever, like uh, uh, the way that we design our, uh, the way that we, our topic and so on, and also to the facilities part. And it's like the, the students need to feel and be able to realize that even though we are not there beside them or in front of them physically, that they need to be able to sense our presence. So these are the three things that um, we hope that uh, sooner or later, uh, our at UM, we can figure out to come up with the, at least the most effective way of conducting the hybrid learning. Okay, so uh, I've drawn some slides here. This is the one that I think what uh, Dr. Faradina also mentioned, saying that the lecturers are in front and then the lecturers are communicating with two groups of students. One is the uh, physical leader, the one that physically there, maybe it's going to be less from this number. I'm just taking these pictures, the free pictures from uh, PowerPoint. And the one who actually looking at the screen, one by one, okay, we have to remember in this case, in, uh, for this physically student, they are besides their friend, or even though they have like one meter SOP and so on, but they can know that their friends are uh, besides them. But for the online classes, they are alone at home looking only at their screen computer so these are the one who we are we need to show that they are 
social presence that they, they, they need to feel that they are inside the class together with the physical friends okay so um this uh what we are doing is actually like when we are doing this so, uh, hybrid learning we need to have a facilitation on how the lecturer students and the student student communication not only from the lecturers to the students but how these students especially these online mode students be able to feel that they are in the class together with their other friends so then um for example uh, there's some tips but there's more tips to come but later we can share that but like for example the online mode student to turn on their video or they can put an avatar to heighten their social presence and on another mm. side is like how they can bring their outside world it means like um even though they're at home they are bringing their outside world to both online and the physical class and for them to share something from what their environment is okay and um this is another uh, this is might be some suggestion from um suggestions like remember like when we do zoom when we do like seminars when we do webinars we have this function of breakout rooms so in order for us to make that these students this online student to be able to feel that they are present we can uh, have uh, some breakout rooms where it's being facilitated by our physical student plus uh, maybe three more like online students in the breakout room so they can feel that they are in the same class and they are talking the same topic and so on so this is uh, on one part of the social presence okay dr azar do you want me to complete my presentation or we have another cycle of doing this um are you going into tips or still on research findings? Yeah, we have another two research findings. Okay, uh, so maybe we research for the research findings first and we share the tips uh, uh, in the next round. Okay, okay, never mind. Well, but I think, okay, so the second one is um, the cognitive precedent. So that uh, so we, we remember like whenever we uh, conduct our hybrid learning, we have to have they have these three elements the social presence the cognitive presence okay this one including also the tips actually <laughs> so uh that's uh what we want them is like we don't want to jump like they that's what i think like come out from what our experience when we do the hybrid learning uh the students who are in the physical mode they feel they are more they can more in terms of answering questions and more involved into the discussion because they feel that uh, we are there and it's much more easier for them to talk to us and convey their ideas. And that's what I think um, when we got a feedback from the online students, they does not feel that. So we need to ensure that both online and physical students be in this cognitive presence where the online student also like uh, have the cycles of inquiry from what they understand for what what we are teaching in the class and then like to explore and integrate and give their resolution okay so this is a uh, one comment from a student class time should have more student inter interaction to complement how we interact online instead of just using powerpoints so we get to be involved online but in here but we are just muted so this is uh the feeling of these online students because they feel like oh they can see our powerpoint but since they can just mute and just maybe like even not showing their video so they are not be able to cognitively present in our class so there are some uh suggestions and tips coming from the surveys and research where we have to include more discussion boards more interactive activities with the students a learner center strategies i think they have like fishbowl method reciprocal teaching approach and inquiry base and so on so all these are the type of, or the way that we can more get more engaged with our students online and physical okay so i'll go to the third slide on to the teaching presence okay so um uh, also like the online student uh, because like the physical student we can sometimes it's more uh, normal to us when they ask we just give feedbacks like that so whatever the online student maybe they, they are having problem with their mind and so on maybe they put in the chat box and so on so but we also have to remember we have to give a timely feedback so they uh, they feel that their work is given priority uh, so uh, the lecturers also need to be explicit and transparent because in this um, 
hybrid learning, the social cues and norms of traditional classrooms are, are and not absent because they cannot see our entire body. If we, they can see our entire body, is okay. But sometimes they miss that. Okay. So uh, also we have to engage with our students to build upon the information provided in the course instructional materials. So we need to establish our presence for both in person and online students. On how we can do that, we can have live spreadsheets, shared documents that both sides. The physical student will key in into that and also the online student will uh, type into that. So then everyone can see the live uh, discussion. So these are the uh, example of like the teaching presence that we can do. Okay, so I think uh, that will be my, my, my three things that I would like to emphasize in case of this hybrid learning. So I'll pass back to Dr. Azza. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Dr. Mas. Those are really good insights where um, students we are actually handling two groups of students at the same time. And we're, we're really multitasking here. Um, the physical and the online students both are under our care. So I'll move on to Dr. Juliana. Perhaps um, some um, insights from, the, from your experience as Ketua Jabatan during um, this trial. We are very fortunate to be able to try this and share this with with the rest of you, M colleagues. Please, Dr. Juliana. Yeah, please, okay, yeah. Share screen. Uh, I have a few slides to share. <coughs> Windows here, yeah, Dr. Mas. So that is one learning lesson. If you're using Teams and it doesn't work for, uh, for everyone, just share your whole thing. Okay, can you see my slide? Yes, okay. Um, okay. All right. So as um, Doctor as I mentioned uh, earlier and uh, in the intro, um, I was um, asked to actually share um, how we did our hybrid class. Uh, we were fortunate enough to actually um, had the opportunity uh, to conduct uh, hybrid classes for our students. Um, during semester 2, 2020, 2021. Um, but I do have to caution everyone that what we did might not uh, apply to everyone, but uh, it's something that um, maybe you can take uh, some you know, uh, tips here and there. All right. Sorry, there's, there's a lot of uh, noise. I think it's a wind uh, or okay, fan. Oh, yeah. Thank yes, you. Yes, fan. Uh, unfortunately, I caught in my room. It's not. <laughs> so I had to on. Is it better now? Yes, yeah, much better. Yes, thank much you. better. Okay, thank, thank you. you. I'm sorry about that. So, our uh, introduction. Uh, firstly, this is uh, our um, academic staff um, of biomedical engineering. Uh, there's 23 of us. Um, when was this? It was conducted in semester two, 2020, 2021. And uh, why? And what? What? What allows her? The, allows her, allow us the opportunity to actually conduct this hybrid class is as an engineering program, um, we thought at that time, um, I think two semesters of online labs, uh, I think is enough. Um, uh, and bear in mind as well, during um, the early year of 2021, cases um, um, have shown trend of going down and um, we haven't heard about data varying yet. So we decided to call our students back for lab sessions, basically. That's the only reason at a time for us to call our students back. Uh, we think that they really need their second motto. Um, it's time for them to actually have their hands-on labs. Um, uh, because as engineering students, uh, it's important for them to have that, uh, that part of um, uh, learning. So we call, basically we call our first year and second year compulsory to come back uh, because our labs are in the first year and second year. Uh, third year labs are a bit different, uh, so it's project based, so some of the students uh, may return, may not. Uh, also, same with the fourth year. Um, they can come back if their FYP um, needs to use the lab, but if their FYP topics are simulation based or, you know, um, database, so they, they can do it at home, so that's fine. But the first year and second years are, are compulsory to come back at a time. Um, and um, 
we were fortunate enough, the first year students, we only have one international student and that international students uh, were here in Malaysia. So we have no problems of getting them to return. Uh, we have a few international students in the second year. Um, what we ask them to do is to defer the lab. It's only one credit hours. Uh, so and when they come back, um, because they are only second year, when they come back, um, for the when the school opens, um, one day at a time when we talk one day, then we will help them to get that one credit hour. So when we wanted them to come back, we had to ensure that everyone is here in Malaysia and they can return. So that's the reason why we were able to do it. And at that time, um, as a head and also uh, in discussion with my team, um, we thought that why why ask the student come back just for labs? Because the nature of our lab is actually um, they might only attend labs for one or two sessions per week. Um, it is important, but the lab is not every day. The lab is not every week. Um, so it's only one or two sessions because they are in groups um, and then might not be um, every week, um, maybe alternate weeks because um, some the, the nature of our open ended labs is uh, they might come in the first week, second week, they might do it. Uh, you know, discussion in a group, then they come back and apply it anyway. So it's not like everyday classes. So there'll be times that they will be doing nothing being in campus or written, written back. Sometimes they are they from police or coming back just for the labs. We would we thought that we need to give them more, uh, you know, uh, maximize their time here in campus. So we agreed on let's try to do hybrid class we need to do the hybrid class give them opportunity uh, to attend since they are here so that is what um, we decided to do and um, uh, this is how we actually do it okay so um what's the next slide uh, okay so what we did um uh, first thing it's very important is actually um, do the planning and checking what's needed. Um, prepare for it. Number three is to do a trial run, execute and then secure. So the first thing that we do is uh, myself and the team actually um, sit down, discuss, have a meeting and discuss which are the courses that will be conducted in hybrid. Um, we can't have all. Um, we actually requested to the faculty and the faculty has been kind enough to actually allocate two venues for us um, for us to use. Um, we requested, uh, this is also in consideration of um, what type of venue available. So we have auditorium, we have Dewan Kulia, we have the cubes. So which of these are, uh, um, you know, um, the best? Uh, you have to think about, um, at that time, we, we, we have to think about how many students are coming? Uh, what are the capacities of the venue? How many do we want students to come in? Um, how about their access and exit from the venue? So we decided um, the cube in engineering, we have a few cubes, uh, one whole floor of block B, uh, four cubes there. So we decided to go for cubes and our deputy in development has been very kind to actually prepare that venue for us. So why we choose that is because um, the cube has a modular setup so you can actually arrange the table and chairs, um, um, you know, so they have distance. So ensure that we are actually conforming to the SOP. And uh, the way the building is, they have um, uh, one one stairs here, so we can use as access to the building and a one way street, and they can go down to the other stairs for exit. So this to ensure that there are no clashing of students um, going in uh, at up and down from the building because the cube is at the first level. Um, so those are the things that um, we consider and discuss um, why uh, the venue was chosen at the time. And uh, teaching and learning equipment, we need to plan and check as well, make sure that uh, the computers, uh, projectors, um, uh, we need cameras, the mic, we need speakers, um, drawing tablet and internet connectivity is uh, very strong in that area. And also, how do we conduct the health screening? You know, so we go everywhere we need to do. Uh, we need to scan a QR code. Um, we need to scan our temperature. So how do we do that and where? So these are the things that we discuss. So once we get that, um, we move on to pre in preparations. That means 
get the venue prepared, um, this, um, confirm on the arrangement of tables and chairs. Um, I'll share with you some pictures later on. Um, if we uh, borrowed um, the infrared uh, thermometer from the faculty, we got one and we purchased the, uh, another two. We also prepared ourselves our own microphone and webcam just in case, but um, we are very fortunate that um, our deputy development actually prepared uh, all of that for us um, because we were the only one actually were doing it. So that's, we, uh, we can ask everything to be prepared for us. So, uh, And then um, print out all the relevant signages and documents, the QR code, um, arrows, for where the students uh, should be coming in, where they should be going out. So those are things are very important as well. So we don't want the students to um, astray from where they should be. The instructions are very clear. Um, students, the venue, let's say it's in uh, Orange Cube 1. So they should come to the faculty and go straight to Orange Cube 1. And once the classes finish, then they should go home. So there will be no loitering around. There will be, you know, um, or just, you know, going to other places. So it's very specific, telling them um, where to go. And so that's why the signage is very important. Because you are talking about the first year especially, they haven't had the opportunity to come into university at a time. They started their university life at home. So this is their first time in campus and in the faculty of engineering. So it's very important for them to know where are all the venues at a time. The third one, of course, you have to do try runs. Um, it's very important. I think we we um, we don't want, while we are giving lectures and, you know, um, find out that, uh, oh, mic is not working, the cameras is not working, you know, internet, um, there's no internet, all those things. So we did several trial runs trial sessions. Um, our assistant engineers um, um, has been great in doing that. So they are the one who actually um, um, did the sessions, make sure that um, we have people in the class and someone connecting online um, from some other places in the faculty and try to get ensure that the cameras are working fine, they can hear uh, the lectures um, and then most importantly is uh, the thing about about our setup is very minimal actually so we have only one camera that is the lecturer can actually choose whether you want the camera facing the students facing yourself or facing the whiteboard okay um the advantage of it is you can't really be going and holding that camera you know uh, everywhere you go around the class um, so that's for you to decide uh, what you want the students to see. Okay, if online. I'm talking about the students online because physical they don't have any problem. And then of course we do the try run of the health screening protocol. Um, where do they uh, get in? Uh, what are the, the the distance of queuing and uh, um, QR code where to place them and all those things and then of course we execute uh, we made announcement to the students make sure the students are very well aware of the flow and protocol for the hybrid class especially for the face-to-face -face, physical face-to-face -face group online learning is still face-to-face -face, but we're talking about the physical face-to-face -face grouping and um, get the list of the students in the physical face-to-face -face groups and conduct hybrid class um, I'll get to you uh, I'll get back to the uh, list of students why we need that and then, of course, um, review the execution of the hybrid class, um, usually after a few classes, maybe at the end of the week. Um, uh, we uh, Immediately after class, um, we get feedback uh, from lecturers and students um, asking them uh, what are the issues. Um, in the first or two weeks, we do have a few. And um, um, then um, I think after that, uh, it's, it's um, alhamdulillah, it's OK. And try to solve and improve on the next class, OK? Hybrid and health screening photo is very simple. Um, initially, what, what, when we, we, we have the physical face-to-face -face session, um, capacity of the class is uh, 15. So that means it's 14 students and one lecturer. Um, initially, we did on a first-come, first-serve basis. All right. So what the lecturer did is, OK, fill in uh, in their WhatsApp group, those who wants to come for physical class, fill in their, their names. But then um, we will ask 
about uh, equality, okay, uh, which is true, okay. Um, how do you ensure equality um, of the physical uh, attendance for the students? You know, first come, first serve basis, and that's only 14 slots. Um, for all, if you have our, our average class is about 80, 70 to 80. So many students might be missing. It's always the same students who are very, you know, sometimes um, very fast in actually responding to the WhatsApp group and see them, the name, same names every time. So we actually then decided to actually divide the students in groups. That means uh, every student now will be given, were given equal opportunity to actually attend the hybrid class, uh, sorry, the physical class uh, in turns, okay? So that means they know that when they will be coming in which week, all right? Um, uh, and then um, I do have to actually share, we do not make it compulsory for the students to attend a physical class, um, but at least students were given the opportunity to attend the physical class. So they have their names in the list. If they decided to join online, they can join online. But at least we gave them equal opportunity to actually have to be attend the physic at the class physically. Because sometimes students, um, if you give, if you tell them, okay, this is your turn, they will come. Rather than if you say, okay, first come first serve, they will not be writing their names in. All right, so. Those are the reasons. So this is what 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 people been questioning about equality. So this is what we did. Uh, I also have to share that um, uh, as I said earlier, um, we did not do for every course, um, but only on selected selected courses for every um, year cohorts, right? So and when we have the list, uh, the students uh, it will be passed to the. Um, support staff, our assistant engineer who has been helping us. Um, so when the students come on that day, um, we know that who will be coming. So we only to ensure that those registered were present. We do not want um, any warrants because um, because some of them, most of them are here in campus. So they might think, ah, oh, I want to go physical class today, you know. Bangun pagi, tiba-tiba nak pergi fizik kelas. So, um, so they will actually take the slots of those actually registered, okay, or, or those actually put in their names. So if we don't have it, the list, so no control of it, who actually registered and who's not. So that's why we have the list, and um, they check who actually came in and allow those registered and uh, to to enter the class. So the class uh, is being set up um, uh, with the um, ensure that um, this is actually normal even for um, not 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 PKP or not not COVID era. Um, make sure that all the equipments are, are running well, and uh, students were instructed on the time period on the health screening. Okay, so let's say um, because our our students are very small, so it's about less than fifteen. Um, we tell them, we told them um, health training will be carried out between, let's say the class at 9, 8.45 to 9. All right, so after 9, uh, if they miss out, they will not be allowed to join the class. Okay, and why we said at the time we do not want the students to, um, you know, came in too early um, and then they will be loitering uh, around in, in the faculty. Um, just to ensure that that 15 time period they were there queuing to get into the class. Okay, um, so these are some of the pictures that um, uh, we had um, uh, screening temperature check by our sensor engineer. We had the health screening QR code in the class, student queuing with uh, distance and also our uh, the hand sanitizer. So these are the classes, um, the cube because of their modular arrangement. So we had different, different um, arrangements. So we can make distance between uh, students and they still wear their masks. 
same with the lecturers. Yeah. Um, some of the feedbacks that we get, um, like for lecturers, of course, meeting the students. Uh, it's been a while, you know, same as me. Um, you know, when, when you teach online, most of the time, all you see is just black screen. It's just like talking to a wall. <laughs> so it's very refreshing, actually, to meet the students. Uh, it's small students, a small group, but it's very refreshing to see the students face to face. And it's, it, we like it very much. And definitely, we are able to get feedback and answers from the student um, because they are in front of us. You know, the thing about online, sometimes you ask them questions. Um, either, either if you don't say their names, um, they'll be just silent. So, you know, so those are the things that is very nice about doing physical classes, something that we miss, um, you know, uh, doing physical classes. And for the students, um, meeting the lecturers, definitely, um, especially for the first year students, they haven't had the opportunity to actually meet the lecturers face to face. So for them, meeting the lecturers um, is, is, is great. And uh, also experiencing university life, uh, getting into campus, going to class, especially the, this, the first year students, yeah, um, you know, um, getting to know the faculty, knowing where is the classes, where, is, where are the labs. So that is what they like it, you know. And for, for the second year students, third year students, fourth year students, coming into the faculty, it felt like normal. So they like it, uh, you know, uh, it's been too long for them to be online. So they like the physical classes and um, they felt the focus from the lecture. I, I remember this, uh, Dr. Mas also mentioned uh, 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 from the uh, studies and research, which is very true. You know, the students are able to feel um, they can understand better. They can, uh, 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 you know, get get the focus from the lecturers and see uh, really sitting in a classroom and hearing the lecturers, the lectures, um, you know, live uh, and seeing the lecturers face. Uh, so the interactions are there, you know, it's not the same as online. So they, they, they can see the difference and they really like that very much. Of course, there's a, there are dislikes from lectures. Sometimes there are technical problems. We can't really run from that. Um, especially because you have you have two groups, the online groups and the physical. There's usually no problem with the physical, but while you are teaching, you have you have to also remember that you have an online group. Sometimes you tend to forget that you have an online group because they tend to be very quiet. So those are the the things that um, you know um, we experience. Um, uh, unstable internet connection. Sometimes we experience that. Um, uh, Sometimes we can't do anything about it, um, but um, usually it's stable. But there are times where it's unstable because remember we have two groups. These are the online groups that we have to, you know, um, really take care. Um, and then um, we can't write or draw on the whiteboard um, because um, unless the camera is really focused on the whiteboard uh, and the camera can really focus in, then you can really write on it. Okay. Um, uh, they do have options of using the drawing tablet, but if you're not used to the drawing tablet, that you'll find yourself struggling actually use it. So um, that that's some of the things. For lecturers, I think we are more comfortable using the whiteboard when we're drawing. So that's the only thing. Uh, from the students, these are from online students. Um, they feel like the lecturers focus more to the students who attended the class physically, which is a plus for the those in physical class, but um, a, a minus for the student, those online. Um, myself, I, I have to admit that, like I said just now, um, you do tend to forget. Um, sometimes you just, you know, you, you are so focused on um, teaching in class, sometimes you forget there's people online. So, because they are very quiet, you know, so that that is one thing that you need to remember, lah, okay, when, when you do your habit class. Um, get um, be more interactive, you know, get uh, at times have uh, different types of activities probably so that can actually get them engaged uh, during classes. And also sometimes the audio can be heard. I think um, since at that time we don't have the pocket microphone, we rely on the mic from the webcam. Uh, so sometimes as lecturers we do like to walk around in class so um, we, because I said we tend to forget that we have a group of students online, so um, audio is just you know 
going slow uh, at times. So um, this, the the to overcome this is to get the um, pocket microphone. I would get so you can actually walk without um, any any issues on um, audio, and um, they can't see what's written on or, or drawn on the whiteboard uh, if the lecturer actually used the whiteboard. But we have actually uh, this are uh, this actually um, comment uh, in the early week. So we have actually um, asked the lecturers um, to ensure that they use um, the drawing board, uh, or if they have a touchscreen laptop to set it up, um, so it's easier for them to actually, um, you know, write and draw anything that they need. And also technical issues, um, same internet uh, unstable or, or you know, whatever technical issues. Sometimes uh, we experience that at home, so it's the same thing. All right. Um, next one, this is the last, some tips, um, I don't know whether I should go here, probably later. Uh, yeah, Dr. Azai? Uh -uh, later. Okay. We, we have so one it. round where we share the tips together. Thank you so much for that insight, Dr. Yes. Juliana. I think uh, oh, we as Thank a department were, were, were very brave in, in trying this out. Thank you so much. And uh, do bear in mind, at this time, the, the vaccination program hasn't really started yet so we were yeah. we were extra careful at that time about vaccination and about SOPs but right now since we have I, I know vaccination is not the end it's not the it's not the reason for us to be you know um, um, more relaxed about it but um, some considerations are there I would like to invite um, Dr. Chan for a very 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 quick sharing because Dr. Chan is also in Dr. Juliana's team he was the uh, hello, Dr. Chan. He was the recipient of UM Lighter Grant and he was the only, um, uh, they were the only project that uh, researched on UM Lighter on hybrid learning. So maybe one minute, Dr. Chan, main lesson that you learned from from uh, your UM Lighter research, please share. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Dr. Azar. Yeah, um, I would say that uh, most of the points have been mentioned by Dr. Juliana. All right. Uh, so I would say um, to top up on one other uh, improvement that can be done for this um, uh, hybrid learning is that we um, need to improve the infrastructure, like the microphones, you know, the cameras, you know. So what happened is like um, we are using the three, the two in one, <laughs> two in one camera, the Logitech one. So inside this Logitech, you have this um, microphone and also uh, the camera also as well but when we walk when we when the academician or the instructors are away from the uh, the, the the microphone then um um the, you know, the sound is not there you know the students online the students who are ending online session they cannot listen to our voice similarly when the students who are attending physical in the physical mode um, when they ask questions, they tend to, you know, speak from their, from their, from their, you know, from their seat, from their place. So, the, the, the microphone cannot capture the voice, you know, the, the, the sound, everything. So, these are the things that we need to take into consideration. So, sometimes, um, on top of the second point is that um, some of the lecturers tend to walk around, tend to walk around the class, you know. So, once we walk around the class, the camera is not moving. So um, the students um, who are attending online session, they lose focus. They don't know what's happening. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's the that's the main thing that we need to consider while we we are executing this um, uh, online uh, this hybrid learning mode. Yeah. Uh, other than that, um, students are giving a mixed feeling about these uh, outcomes of this uh, hybrid learning um, hybrid learning mode. Uh, but nevertheless, most of them are giving positive, um, positive um, feedbacks at this moment. But we tend to collect more data um, perhaps very, very soon. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Chan. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chan. It's so nice yeah. to see you in orange, matching with me, orange <laughs> and white. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Sorry all the, all the noise. Yeah. <laughs> all right. No thank, problem. Thank, thank, thank. Yeah. thank you for your bye, sharing. Bye, um, bye. Just to mention that Dr. Chan uh, is also the uh, award winner during EM Light Tech. <laughs> thank, you, thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Right. So, yeah, we can see from now and from, I think, Dr. Zahir, you have, you have, you had your 10 minutes just now to, to share what, even you couldn't share the slide, but we get the lesson. We did get the lesson that um, try runs and technical technicalities is the main main issue that we have to address when we do hybrid. 
we understand that students like it, students appreciate coming to lab, uh, lab uh, classes physically, we appreciate that the presence is there, like Dr. Mas mentioned, the social presence, the cognitive presence is much, much better. Um, um, but the technicalities is the one that we have to really invest in and, and try out and really plan in terms of activities, not just the hardware setup. If we have the opportunity to try out with, with simple technologies, maybe we should really, you know, not just wait for University Malaya's um, um, uh, preparation, but uh, from our side later, we'll share more on the tips. But I would like Dr. Zahir to share um, his insights, 10 minutes insights on uh, remote learning. Please, Dr. Zahir. Minutes. Sekejap, yeah. <laughs> Uh, can you <laughs> Nanti kita share lagi banyak masa tips uh, because we want to have some time to address um, concerns from the audience as well. Okay, all right. So um, I think first, firstly, uh, I would like to apologize uh, for uh, the technical hiccups uh, that we had. Uh, for somebody who uh, is knee deep in technology, I always get, get pranked by technology that way. Um, I even get pranked like that uh, in uh, large international conferences. So um, I don't know why I'm, I'm, uh, technology loves me probably. So uh, let me um, uh, share my screen. Let me try that again. Hopefully it works now. So can you see me? Okay, all right. So, so, so is it still on the display? Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, so um, actually when, when we talk about uh, remote learning or hybrid classes, um, uh, we need to think about um, the, the technology design, also the learning space. Uh, and that's actually uh, very, very important. And um, you see from the, the sharing from um, faculty of engineering just now. Um, and I actually uh, sort of did the, the research on this. Uh, in order for me to advise the university on what to uh, invest in uh, and also what to uh, provide for the university in order for uh, hybrid learning can uh, hybrid learning uh, to be able to uh, run efficiently and uh, I'm going to um, explore some lessons uh, from uh, HyFlex model. So HyFlex model is actually uh, a model of um, of hybrid learning or hybrid virtual learning uh, that was started um, in the United States, University of San Francisco uh, State uh, in 2006. Um, and, and, and the most, most of the reading that I did um, actually started from there. And then uh, there'll be enough, there is, there are quite a number of resources actually and research done on um, uh, hybrid uh, classrooms. And I'm going to share the uh, the most important parts today. So I was actually um, uh, joined um, by Dr. Veronica from um, Faculty of uh, Languages. She's um, so, uh, and she wanted to actually learn how to use the, the blended learning or the, the hybrid learning uh, uh, setup in this um, uh, Faculty of Science C1. Uh, and uh, in, in, if you see the, uh, the the setup at the back here, uh, what the lecturer will see actually, the lecturer will be able to see um, a screen at the back showing the uh, the, the online participants and also uh, if you notice there's a small camera there and that's actually for um, uh, viewing the, the the lectures. Okay, and uh, actually when, when you talk about uh, uh, hybrid learning, what needs to change first is actually the the classroom uh, layout you know, to change. Okay, uh, 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 if you go into the any rooms here in the university, uh, you will find that uh, we are used to the deep layout. That means uh, the the room is long to the back. Okay, and people are sitting uh, in those uh, uh, at the back. Uh, but for uh, hybrid learning classroom, and actually for uh, for now for collaborative classroom. Um, uh, we find that from literature and also from design, good designs, uh, the white layout is much, much more effective. So white layout means um, the wall, um, 
uh, which is um, long, is actually uh, to the back of the next field, to the front of the picture. Okay, and I'll get to you. I, I'll get to you why it's it's important this way. So what what I want you to uh, try and do first is get your faculty to rearrange the tables and chairs. That's very simple, isn't it? So change the layout from uh, the the long room into the white room. And uh, because your 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 whiteboards and projection projection screen, put them on the white uh, white walls. Okay, um, so we are talking about this. Okay, so this is normally our classroom, isn't it? But get the faculty to change it to that. So get it uh, from uh, the long to. Right, and that is actually uh, uh, will change uh, hybrid learning uh, uh, to be very, very effective and to be very, very efficient. So, why do you want? Why do you want a white layout? Okay, the first one, it's better spacing between students in rows. If your, uh, you, if your programs are still uh, working on 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 sitting in rows, it's actually better spacing uh, in terms of uh, safer distance distances. The secondary, the second thing is actually more, more room for movement. Uh, the third thing is better acoustic data because uh, then you can actually um, uh, arrange for Microsoft mic microphone uh, replace, uh, placement. So just now uh, in uh, faculty of science uh, C1, uh, we have three microphones. So the, the, the microphones are uh, array microphones. It's trying to pick up. Uh, my voice uh, from the center microphone. Okay, uh, there are another kind of technologies. It's called um, uh, sound sound beaming sound beaming microphone. Uh, uh, so sound beaming microphone, what it does is actually it's a, a single unit. Uh, you put it in the ceiling, so uh, and it will uh, tune uh, to the voice of people from anywhere in the room. So that's I think. It's it's a better setup, but uh, it's um, it's like slightly more expensive in, uh, uh, compared to a array microphone, a three microphone setup. Because then you need to really do the, the setup um, manually. Uh, the fourth uh, important point is a white layout actually gives you less distance with the back of the room. So you remember the the picture that I showed you here, okay? So if you have a deep room, you would find that the uh, the, the camera that points to the lecturer will be way back, isn't it? So when you uh, change the layout, you will find that the, the distance between the lecturer and the microphone becomes shorter. So it allows for uh, better, uh, uh, better viewing for the uh, remote learners because they will actually be, uh, uh, they will look closer to uh, the, the lecturer. And the second thing is, the lecturer will be able to look at the um, the students on the back of the room be, uh, because it's closer. So I I, I remember just now a uh, doctor Doctor Mas is it uh, saying that um they, you keep forgetting the the, the students uh, who are online and the way to change that is to, um, have a monitor at the back to show the online students. Okay, I will show you a, an example from uh, uh, other universities uh, later. So, and then you you are going to actually have more usable spaces, uh, surfaces in the front. So, uh, imagine that if you do uh, set up for uh, learners, uh, the learners will need to uh, have uh, access to all the kinds of technology that you use, even the whiteboard. Whiteboard is a technology, isn't it? So, uh, so. Uh, and the, for the students uh, on the remote side, uh, with a white uh, layout, then the, with, and the, with wide angle camera, then uh, the, the remote learners will be able to see the projection screen. They will be able to see the whiteboard at least. So those, those two things. And you don't have to actually interchange those two. Okay. And uh, this this white layout in the classroom has been used in universities in other countries for years now. And we actually in the university have a learning space policy uh, instituted in 2012. But uh, I don't know what happened um, uh, along the line. Uh, people might 
sort of forget, forgot, forgotten about it. Okay, uh, so it's, it's actually, um, uh, uh, we need to actually look at, uh, at the policy uh, again to actually use the collaborative learning um, uh, layout in our uh, classrooms uh, today. Okay, so this, these are examples. So this is from um, NTU Singapore. So this is, uh, uh, this is uh, really um, right out there because they have uh, writable space all over the, um, uh, the walls and every uh, uh, student table would actually have um, uh, monitors attached to it. So uh, bear in mind this is pre-pandemic, this is actually 2012. Okay, um, this is uh, slightly newer, so you can actually get um, the lecture halls to uh, convert into this kind of layout. And this is what we are trying to uh, design for uh, lecture room C1. So uh, part of the, uh, the, re the renovation and refurbishment that we are going to do is we are going to uh, lay out the, um, the lecture hall this way. So re um, remember again just now, uh, it's it's wide instead of long, isn't it? So this is actually how it looks. And the, the tables are actually collaborative tables. So that means people are going, uh, going to sit together uh, and then they can actually uh, discuss. So it's, it's part of uh, collaborative uh, learning. And easily uh, you can actually put monitors at the back uh, so that then you can include uh, the uh, uh, online learners or remote learners. So this is... Um, Northampton, Northampton University, so this uh, also in the UK. So uh, again, you use, uh, so they have actually a smart board. We, we do quite um, a number of smart boards uh, in, in, in the university. The only thing is that uh, when uh, faculties install smart boards, uh, the training that, that should come with it uh, is uh, almost uh, non-existent or very, very limited. So when you have a smart board in the in the university or in the in the faculty, get uh, the vendors or the technicians to teach you how to use it effectively because it will do a wondrous things. It can do wondrous things. Okay. Um, but so so that's the layout. But I would argue that's very important. It's actually the audio. And we, we get that lesson just now, isn't it? When, when I was trying to join you in, uh, in uh, C1. So um, it is the most important factor in hybrid learning, in remote learning. It needs to be clear, there should be no feedback, and there should be no echo in uh, the whole class, anywhere, uh, any, anywhere you are. So the, the lecturer can be sitting uh, in front of the class, the lecturer can be sitting in the middle of uh, standing in the middle of the class and the the the, uh, the students can be sitting anywhere but the microphone or the audio must be able to pick up those conversations okay and it is not enough if you only uh, hear the sound of the, the, the educators the lecturers because in learning the social aspect the social engagement is very very important so in class exchanges will need to actually be heard as well. Um, so that then uh, people can uh, respond to questions. Uh, people can join in the discussion. So uh, imagine that um, you have a, a click mic with you. So somebody from the audience, uh, the, 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 uh, the in-class audience asking a question. So if you don't have a mic system that can pick up that, that voice, then the remote learners will, is going to be left out, isn't it? So it's very important to think about uh, the audio technology embedded in uh, remote classes so that everybody will uh, be heard and everybody can join in discussions and that makes uh, collaborative learning works. Okay, the next uh, important one is uh, video, of course. So educators must be able to see the remote students. And why I put the, the word must here is because uh, psychologically, if you can't see uh, those students, then they get left out, isn't it? So um, that's why uh, later I will show you uh, some pictures. Um, uh, those uh, universities who invest in uh, the technology and invest in the research into the technology find it very, very important that you see the students, okay? Um, 
and the remote students must be able to see the educator. That's the very least. So, um, so I would say that um, um, if the faculty don't have uh, the money, invest on the camera that uh, shows the educator. But they should also be able to see their in-class colleagues. That means uh, when they are uh, learning, when they are uh, asking questions or when they are trying to respond to questions, then you can actually um, uh, see who's talking, isn't it? Um, the third part, not to PTZ or not to, to uh, not to PTZ. So PTZ is actually a, a camera technology. So pen, tilt and zoom. So P, T, Z. So pen means uh, moving from side to side. Tilt, um, um, tilt is actually uh, tilting the, the camera. Uh, and then zoom is actually to zoom in. Okay, so pen, tilt and zoom uh, technology. Uh, although it looks really, really uh, it sounds really, really great. Uh, you, you, uh, you, L, you actually have uh, auto tracking PTZ. So auto tracking, that means uh, the camera uh, powered by AI will uh, capture the, uh, the lecturer's head and then it will follow the lecturer everywhere the lecturer goes, okay? Uh, but um, going through uh, test setups and, and, and looking at the, at, at the, uh, the way that uh, PTZ camera works, uh, to me, I think PTZ is an uh, overstatement. Uh, you can have PTZ, um, uh, but you need to remember that it will induce motion sickness on the ground. Okay, because when the lecturer, uh, especially like me, I like to, to walk around in, in, in the classroom. Um, uh, the camera is going to swerve and follow me everywhere I go. And uh, easily, um, so uh, I would suggest that if you want to invest in PTZ, yes, uh, but um, get uh, the PTZ that actually uh, move slowly and can be prom programmable or can be prom programmable. There. So that means if you first uh, put push first button, it will point somewhere. Push second button, it will point somewhere. So uh, uh, and it will not take any like um, uh, uh, wildly uh, wildly uh, moving around wherever the lecturer goes. Okay, uh, and then um, uh, we also need to remember that. The, especially the remote students, they should be able to see the, the projection screen clearly. So in um, uh, screen sharing, then that, that's okay. But they should be also be uh, able to see the whiteboard or any writable surface, okay? And uh, any other input sources. So that means if the lecturer uses um, a document viewer, for example, so sometimes people uh, bring documents, uh, use document viewer. So they should be actually um, uh, be able to actually uh, to uh, to choose from those different um, uh, input sources. So, uh, so this is um, uh, an example from um, uh, KU Leuven uh, in, in Belgium, and this is their um, uh, hybrid uh, classroom uh, setup. Okay, so uh, you will find that um, at the back there, there are people uh, who is joining remotely in the classroom. And uh, what's interesting that I find is that uh, they use um, normal webcams. If, uh, if you see the, uh, the TVs, on top of the TVs, they, they actually use normal webcams. And there are four of them. Okay. And when I think about why that uh, is, um, uh, is done uh, that way, is that uh, it gives the student a personalized uh, contact with the lecturer. Okay, so let's say, for example, you are the student uh, here at the bo uh, bottom right. So uh, if the stu this student is talking to the lecturer, uh, the lecturer should be actually be looking at this camera. So it becomes a very direct face-to-face -face, um, uh, conversation, isn't it, between that student and the lecturer. And if the lecturer, for example, is addressing the, the student here, then uh, the lecturer will actually look at that camera. So uh, to the learners, uh, the lecturer will be looking at him. And so it becomes a very direct contact, isn't it? And that's psychologically, uh, I think it's very important, especially for remote learners. So they don't feel uh, left uh, behind, okay? Um, so this is um, what it looks like from the lecturer's side. So uh, 
that nothing much to to show here. Probably uh, uh, the the screen underneath. So that would be the projector that the the, the next is uh, showing. Okay. So uh, in um, so this is another project in the same university. So this is for uh, a large um, lecture theater. So um, the the remote learners are actually uh, at the bottom tier, isn't it? Because if you put the, the remote learners at the top, uh, away, too far away from the lectures, then the lectures will not be able to see um, uh, the students. And then they got, uh, uh, again, uh, left behind. Okay, so this is uh, uh, Purdue University uh, in the US. Uh, similarly, so this actually, uh, this, is quite, this is quite interesting because it uses teams uh, like we do. Okay, uh, and I was talking to the, te the, the de technicians uh, just now. Um, uh, at, at the room, uh, and uh, the, there might be issues with um, uh, the setup uh, at your computers, uh, the, the audiences, because uh, there are two things that uh, that is one is the desktop version of um, Microsoft Teams, and one is the browser version, and the des desktop Teams uh, sometimes are not updated. So you need to make sure that you always update your, your computer systems, your software, so you need to uh, always uh, get updated. And I think um, uh, having trial runs is actually uh, where we, we get that, that, that update, uh, update is um, uh, out. Okay, so um, going back and trying to summarize uh, what I'm, I'm trying to say uh, in terms of technology, uh, in terms of what uh, it's needed uh, for remote learning to run effectively is that first change the layout of your classes, classes. get it into the white um, uh, setup so that then um, you reduce the distance between the, the lecturer and the, the remote learners and then uh, it gives it frees up the wall for more uh, input sources that uh, remote learners and also in class learners uh, will uh, uh, will have okay. So uh, challenges and opportunities. So I, I got this, I got this from um, uh, a paper uh, raised at R twenty twenty. So this is uh, quite a, a new paper. I, I shared the uh, the uh, the reference at, at the end of the uh, uh, PowerPoint. You can actually uh, download that that the PowerPoint is, is in our teams. So the first one is uh, it's uh, hybrid learning is actually a radical shift in teachers' uh, pedagogical methods in order to uh, accommodate, accommodate the new technology. So the key word here is actually pedagogical methods. We need to update ourselves with the, with the suitable pedagogical methods to, to accommodate uh, hybrid learning. Uh, uh, synchronous hybrid learning requires more coordination from the teachers. Of course, uh, you're not just uh, coordinating students in the classroom that you can see, isn't it? You are coordinating as well students uh, remotely. Uh, who, who is away from you and you are coordinating remote students with in-class students, isn't it? So it's uh, a bigger coordination effort from uh, the, the teacher. Um, uh, the fourth one, it's very, very important to design and implement uh, pedagogical strategies and also technical, technical, technological systems that enacts comparable learning experience. So undoubtedly, if you if you design the the learning environment well, uh, both uh, remote students and also in class students will uh, get comparable learning experience. So is there is a big risk that if you left the students, especially the remote ones, out, then they will not get that comparable learning experience. Is it? And that's why uh, why it is very important. I I I, thought, I told this to many uh, lecturers or many uh, faculty that I visited invest on the monitors at the back so that then the lecturers will be able to see the remote learners. And then the last one is uh, the remote students indicated that it's difficult to make the teacher aware that they want to answer the question. And if you don't invest on that or you don't uh, figure out a way of getting uh, the remote learners to be able to uh, be seen by the lecturers, then this is actually uh, a big risk. So uh, it's difficult to make the teacher aware that they want to answer questions or to respond, which makes them frustrated and uninvolved. Okay, 
So uh, when they are frustrated, when they are uninvolved, uh, the audio is not there, uh, they, they can't see what they are doing, then uh, the learning is not going to happen effectively. Okay, so I, I think that's all. Um, I know I sort of overrun uh, the, Thank uh, the time you. allocation. Thank you. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But very useful, very useful uh, insights on the technological perspective, why we need why we need to consider a little bit more on the technology. Um, I will look at the questions now. Um, we are now in the, uh, okay, uh, don't forget to screenshot these references or maybe Dr. Zahir, you want to copy paste the references on the chat section so people can, can. Yeah, uh, I can do that uh, or you uh, can click, actually click go into it. the teams, go into the files and Hi. then <laughs> and Don't then download the my presentation, presentation. Okay, so um, I guess the lesson here is pedagogical intervention from our side. I don't want to make it sound too difficult, but yeah, um, something that we can look at if we don't have the resources. Maybe Dr. Mas want to share a little bit of how you did with your um, microphone, uh, um, the feedback from our colleagues in the Department of Biomedical Engineering was Dr. Mas punya paling, paling, paling jadi sekali. Dr. Mas, you want to share how you, you shared your microphone? <laughs> Dr. Mas, the bleak mata dia. <laughs> yeah, how, how, how did you do? In a uh, low source setting like what we had. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's right. that's but I would that's love, that's right. yeah, I, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, but to be honest, I would love to have that setting, the one that Dr. Zahir just show in our UM. Well, then the student would love to go to universities with the SETI side, with the way that, you know, very nice. Uh, so, Dr. Zahi, yes, we support you to bring this up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alright, so, yes, um, last time, so what I did was, uh, I kind of like using like three tools or three gadgets at once. I have my handphone as my microphone, so I put it in my pocket. I have to <laughs> wear like a jacket or something that I put in my pocket together with my earphone and microphone with my handphone. So I have my touch tablet where can I dribble and screen that I hold all time. And then we have the screen from the computer side uh, that we uh, prepared by the university. So we ha I have three things going on at once. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I wanted the, the, the online student to feel that they are in together with us, even though at that time, of course, we only have what, one screen at the front. So, by doing that, I can go around uh, because I'm holding my tablets, right? So, I can share my screen through the tablets. Uh, and also, like, uh, at the same time, the I call the students, I'm uh, like the online students, I like students in my pocket. Because I'm talking to them in, through my phone, so they are like genie in my pocket. So, and when I I talk to them, I will like uh, address like uh, whatever their names and okay, whoever in my pockets like and their names and then oh, okay, they, they interact. So the others can see them through the screen at the big screen and at front. But me as like personalized, I'm talking to them as they are near to me. So that's how. But to be honest, that why you have to use all the the tools that you have your own data sometimes, <laughs> because you want the the internet to be like like uh, no like it's not disconnected and so on. Because we we know I think that's what we have just had now. So and you have to use your own microphone. You have to bring in whatever you have. That's how like we do that like last time. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Mas, for that quick sharing. Um, basically, uh. We just have to be creative. Um, if we wait for everything to be ready for us, um, we might get disappointed. But if we are creative, student will appreciate. Student will understand. They are what they want is to come to universe to campus. They want to meet their friends and they want to come into the class. But uh, the learning experience, we have to be a little bit creative on how to make it work. Uh, Dr. Farah, Dr. Juliana, is there anything you want to add in terms of tips? Or we can, um, okay, Dr. Farah? Okay, Dr. Taza, I think um, maybe we can go to questions um, for now and then okay. while we answer it, we can right. show selected slides now if applicable. Okay, yeah. we have a question from Dr. Susanna here, which I have quickly answered, big yes, my, my personal answer is a yes. 
uh, which is, is it recommended to have TAs or teaching assistants and technicians during the class? So personally, I say this is the time to, to get them involved in our classes. I mean, to become our, you know, wingman, wingman, wing lady. But um, any have, other opinion? I, from have, I, have, I have an idea. So uh, let's, uh, let's empower our students so to be that, that technological help uh, with the classroom technology. We are, are living with uh, digital natives, isn't it? They would um, be able to speak up on that um, very, very easily. So, um, yes, we might need the TA for um, uh, really technical stuff, but to control slides and to um, help switch uh, things um, on the in the in the class session, uh, we can get. Uh, uh, one of the students or uh, a group of students to uh, sort of take turns doing it. Mm, good suggestion. Any other questions? Uh, uh, Dr. Azza, I would like to add on that. Uh, yes. Dr. Fahis. Yes, the one, uh, remember in my slide, I put like, uh, for example, if uh, breakout rooms and so on, that's only the method. But if you can see in my slide, I'm putting like the physical students is going to facilitate uh, the whatever group discussion and so on that what we are doing. So so like Dr. Zahi said, it's like I think our students uh, can be involved in this teaching uh, moving onwards is when we do this hybrid. So they are the our uh, immediate facilitator to facilitate together with the friends in the online environment. So I think that's what, what uh, is what I think that's good things to do. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And uh, perhaps because they also are the ones who will understand the most what their friends need. Yeah, so um, maybe they can have a, a better solution, a more a robust solution compared to solutions coming from people like us, the orang-orang tua ni kan? So yes, Dr. Farah, silakan. Tua ke dah? Muda lagi, muda lagi. Ideally, I think uh, having our technicians uh, very helpful. Tapi kalau kita cannot do it, of course we will have to rely on our students lah to take turns. Just that remember that our students on site, the physical students also, uh, they wanted to learn. So uh, there must be some kind of um, you know taking turn ka or agreement for them to be involved. Uh, I would suggest from my experience that um, have the technologies or the technicians in your faculty to be with you at least for the first or second classes okay so that they know uh, what is expected okay like dr zahi mentioned just now could be upgrading not just the hardware but also the software if you can do this with your uh, technicians earlier before the class start will be great but sometimes our lecturers also are the faculty pada masa pengajaran okay otherwise kita pergi buat research and so on so have them with you if possible. Hopefully, faculty can arrange for this lah. If there is any, they can go to job, but thank you. Uh, you can think about that too. That's all, Ataza. Thank you. Dr. Nurjana, you want to raise up your question? Yes, terima kasih. Um, a few questions actually, but my main concern is basically infrastructure because the faculty is not equipped. Uh, and if you talk about the white layout, in tutorial rooms, for instance, definitely is is narrow, is long, and we only have one white wall because the other side is basically windows. So that's something that uh, is going to be a challenge. Uh, and lecture halls are fixed in terms of the uh, seatings and all that. So I don't think you can change unless it rombak semua. That's that's one. This the second point um, is with regards to logistics because for our faculty, the core subjects we have a minimum of 150 to 170 uh, students, uh, and each tutorials can go up as high as 18 students. Um, so that's in terms of logistics, uh, we don't really know how to go about it. There's a lot of things that needs to be done as shared by Dr. Juliana just now. Uh, we only have two technicians in the faculty. 
uh, and because university is saying hybrid untuk semua so bila kita mula serentak semua i i think there's there's going to be a breakdown there is no way the um, internet connection the is is able to take on all that yeah uh, and my third concern is with regards to assessments because um, physical classes and online classes i have adapted and used uh, different kind of assessments because of online so now we have the brilliant idea of ha having hybrid um, so it's going to be a, a huge challenge to uh, recalibrate in terms of assessment and if we use in terms of rotation for physical classes again you know we have 14 weeks untuk student yang ramai macam tu ada yang takkan sempat to experience that so these are some of the things you know not to mention the uh, uh, items that that needs to be put in place you know your your mic your all, all these things these are all infrastructure and now as academicians my concern is my delivery and my interaction uh, and i find that online um, although students can some of them, some of the students can't even switch on their camera because you know their connection is not very good uh, so they will have to actually just dengar je so we, we have adapted in the sense that I actually record all the sessions and I upload it for the students so that they can come back and listen to it at any time. Uh, a lot of collaborative work as well, group work online uh, amongst the students, they've got their group work uh, and I'm in their group WhatsApp and um, to be honest, I think there is a lot more interaction online than face to face because a lot of their their communication is captured and they seem to be freer in their communication compared to physical classes. Kalau physical classes kena, kena call one by one uh, but online they seem to be to be more comfortable. So and, and I actually have the record in terms of the past couple of semesters in terms of their performance, the outcome of online learning and I must say that the students have performed exceptionally well on online classes yeah that's that's just a bit of sharing on my part so i'm i'm not sure university is is uh, ready for campus-wide hybrid classes because definitely my faculty will face a lot of challenges in terms of infrastructure alone belum lagi nak cakap apa-apa pasal pedagogy and all that the infrastructure will not in place yeah thank you yeah i would like to pick up uh dr nurjana's um issue on um, how online, how ped pedagogical online um, tricks and traits that we have picked up last semester, uh, last three semesters, three or four semesters. We should not, my personal opinion, we should not leave that behind. We just, we just carry over whatever we find best practice and we can still do it right now, even though, um, if I can share, Dr. Farah, I know Dr. Farah nak, nak jawab kerja, eh? If I can share my experience, I got three chance of doing my um, hybrid class. My first chance, uh, my first class was, uh, I was standing in front, like delivering an online uh, a physical lecture. And I keep looking at the screen uh, of, for my online students. And I asked the students on the tables in front of me, to switch on their microphone so that they can become the buddy to the online students in like Dr. Ma's suggestion. It was so chaotic because the echo, when you switch on many speakers at one time, you go woo, 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 and then everyone switch off the, the microphone. And then we decided, okay, who switch on the speaker, who switch on the microphone? And then we spent quite some time. But that was a lesson for us that um, we want to do all this buddy system and 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 uh, me coming back to my real self of you know performing in front of everyone and walking around in class but we found that um i i personally found that i i wasn't equipped technically for that so my next class what uh, the sim i think this is the bare minimum of what we can offer is uh, i sit 
in I come to class. So the students who come to class, they come to class. But I sit in front of my laptop, just like I'm sitting at my home, at home, in front of my laptop. So I address the quest, the students. It's like it's still 80% online with some people in front of me. So at times I can shout out and, you know, talk to them. But primarily it is still online because students, they just want to come to class. They just want to feel pakai baju, tudung lilit, you know, uh, you know, makeup sikit. They just want to have that social presence. It's not like they want to learn online hybrid class sangat pun. So I, uh, to me, my bare minimum is to come to class, switch on my camera, my MS Teams, and just do the class as if it's I'm at home and there, but there are still some students. So we have that, that extra bit. So I, I guess we were we were able to secure that balance, but yeah, of course, with with uh, more experience, we can extend that um, trial and error uh, way. Dr. Farah, you want to add? Dr. Farah, I'm uh, muted. Sorry, my laptop me lambat sikit. Okay. After this, Dr. Lokesh, yeah? Okay. So I think that uh, what Dr. Azar said is correct. We don't just, you know, dump everything what we have done, the innovative ways of teaching and learning with students. Actually, I am uh, already prepared some slides on what to do before, during and after the class. Okay, and um, maybe this is not the right time to share. Uh, we want to take more questions, but uh, the gist of it is that I have experience being online learner on site. Okay, and I... Definitely, uh, at that time, the technology is not like this. Can we can't see the uh, the faces of the students online, but we can hear their voices. Okay, at that time, they were using a phone conference yang besar tu. <laughs> at that time, so they join us uh, with their voices. Okay, so I think that uh, it's important during the sessions that the lecturer have us work with the online learners if possible okay there are two models that i wanted to share maybe later but just um briefly okay either you can pair the students physical students with the physical students for a collaborative work give them times like uh, maybe 20 minutes to work on an issue or problem and then they will present to the class or you can pair the online learner with the online learner or you can also pair a mix of online learner plus the physical learner by having the online, le uh, sorry, having the physical learner join the online uh, platform. Okay, I have done that uh, with my classmates who were um, online. So I was I was there in the classroom and talking to the uh, to the friends online, and we were discussing. And then we come back to the room. Um, and, and share the ideas with uh, the rest. So we need to be a little bit uh, creative, innovative, maybe improvise a little bit. And this is not easy, <laughs> as we know, but we can try, okay? Because we have been innovative for, what, two years now? Don't let the innovation thing, you know, hilang from us like that. Okay, that's all, Dr. Azza. Big question from Dr. Lokesh, who has been raising his hand for a while. Yeah. Sorry to keep you waiting good, morning, like good morning. Good morning. And it was a great learning today uh, at the hybrid mode and all. And actually, when I was in my previous university, we had uh, tried a hybrid mode in uh, October 2020, about, about a year ago. Uh, but actually, being a pharmaceutical chemist and chemistry uh, uh, lecturer, uh, we had uh, uh, difficulties in teaching the chemistry subjects, especially on the hybrid mode. Because online mode, uh, you have a separate notepad to be open and to express the mechanisms and all. But in hybrid mode, if I had to write on the board something about the mechanism, so I trust if the current setup in uh, our uh, classrooms probably should have at least minimum of two cameras. One is the general camera, which cover the whole room where both the online and the physical people, physical people anyway, they can see me, which I'm in the classroom and the online people can view me, you know. So there's one camera must be dedicated to the whiteboard where the uh, hybrid people, uh, especially online people can view the what I'm writing on the board, especially for chemistry, for ease of learning of mechanisms. 
it is uh, the whiteboard the the importance of whiteboard is very 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 much you know uh, active needed you know uh, to be more uh, proactive learning and also the uh, practical learning you know perspective learning you know for the students so if it is a whole physical class no issues because we write something on the board as a teacher traditional teacher we write on the board and we write on the mechanism uh, and could you uh, suggest us could we have that uh, such facility like two cameras in built on the uh, our hybrid room currently i think this question is for you dr zahi Sorry, I, I think that Jahi was busy. Yeah, yeah, some mosquitoes are the there. Probably, yeah. Dr. Zahi, are you are you here? <laughs> Sorry, I think I can. Dr. Latesh, would, uh, do would you like to um repeat the last bit? Sorry, so I think I think yeah, he has some disturbance about the fly or something. You know, some flies are around there. Okay. Dr. Zahi, um, oh, we we are having a monkey pest problem. <laughs> no, okay. sorry, sorry, no, it's just it's just it happens. It happens. <laughs> Uh, you, so, uh, you, two you, cameras. How would you how would you suggest to have that two cameras? I think one is to see the whole class, and one is to zoom in at the whiteboard because we still like to uh, write on the whiteboard. Oh, okay. So, um, um, I think the the most important one is for the students to see the lectures and also any write writing services. So it can be just one uh, wide angle. Uh, camera but it needs to be um, uh, zoomed in sufficient enough so that the uh, the people on the remote setting will be able to see what's what's being written and then um, I, I would say that um, the the view uh, into the class will be uh, a luxury uh, it's, it's nice to have uh, and uh, the reason I say that is because uh, what's important for the remote learners uh, it's actually uh, to be able to hear uh, those in the classroom. But if you uh, have that uh, the ability to do that, that two camera setup, then it will be also good that you can just point uh, the camera to the, the, the classroom as well. Oh, but, but the classroom is not inbuilt with the two cameras, you mean? Uh, uh, no. So, so it, it depends on uh, what the, the faculty is trying to procure. So uh, oh, some uh, yeah, because some we have we have actually three years year one year two year three I trust year one year two has got the uh, hybrid classrooms are ready but one one year we don't have actually but we cannot ship the room at current because current situation you know uh, the timetable is fixed already timetable has been approved uh, by the faculty and. Uh, um, this is, uh, actually, I didn't view the um, uh, current room. What is there actually? And probably we, I am. Uh, we have a meeting in the, this Friday, and probably I request for the mock. Uh, as, as somebody suggested, I think that uh, uh, Noor Aziz Aza, I think suggested that we can uh, go to the classroom and feel the actually, you know, uh, with the technical help, you know, with the technician, go there and you know yeah. and see that probably we will try that and see how it will be uh, improved and probably uh, for the better learning of the student. Yes, um, yeah. and I think um, uh, if you have the time, uh, do go to uh, Faculty of Science C1 uh, lecture uh, lecture room. Yeah, uh, they have the, the, the proof of concept set up there. Yeah, sure, uh, sure. So yeah. Probably, out, probably. Uh, yeah, probably we go there and explore ourselves so that how can we accommodate, you know. Uh, uh, th thank you very much. Thank you for it. Right. Thank you, Dr. Lokesh, for your question. We have a question from Dr. Amira. Um, we are 11.33 right now on my screen. We promise to end at 11.30. Um, maybe this is the last one, Dr. Amira, please. Thank you so much, Dr. Azza. I'll try to be really quick. Um, I actually just wanted to share some... Uh, uh, some, I guess, uh, in your pocket ideas about how to share your whiteboard. If you, if you are the kind of lecturer that really needs to uh, teach and write on the whiteboard, so I've actually done this um, not so much as a hybrid class, but more as a asynchronous supplement to my synchronous class. So what I've actually done is I would write on the whiteboard and I would assign a student to take a every time after I'm done, I'll uh, ask the student to take the photo. I have to take a photo of my whiteboard, and that student will be seated in front. And usually, it's a student with a pretty good camera. 
And as soon as they take a photo of what's on the whiteboard, they would then share it on our WhatsApp group. So for every class that I teach, I have a WhatsApp group. But now we can tell you that. Do it. Uh, tell them it's better because it doesn't take up with storage. So you can do that um, if you want to write on the whiteboard. Another possibility is that you could also set up a phone. Uh, maybe it's better to have your own phone, like a secondary phone. Uh, you can actually have that phone log in as a pretend online student stroke instructor. And that phone can also be on presentation mode, uh, where that phone is for viewing only the whiteboard, but then the microphone is actually coming from you, and then you can actually talk as you write on the whiteboard, um, but then the presentation is coming from that phone that's showing the whiteboard. And uh, very quickly, just to say, uh, going back to the idea of bringing in teaching assistance or technical assistance, of course, that kind that that's limited in what the faculty can provide. But if we have uh, PhD students who are also uh, lecturers or PhD students who are hoping to get into academia, this is actually a good opportunity to bring them into our class to sort of like be our teaching assistants because it also provides them a very, very valuable experience. So that's why I wanted to share. Thanks. Amira, thank you so much, Dr. Amira. Uh, very, very useful tips. Um, have your second phone as your pretend student slash instructor and um, just get your students who are physically present to take picture and send in the WhatsApp group. That's another many, many, one of the many, many creative idea you can. Um, one last round. Uh, 30 seconds from each panel before we end. Who wants to start? Dr. Farah, you want to start? I'll start. Okay, that is easily. Okay. All right. So um, I think um, uh, I like to uh, sort of um, call upon um, uh, my fellow lecturers. We are uh, educators and also um, academics in a research university. So uh, apart from researching our uh, our own respective fields, teaching uh, and learning is also something that we need to actually research on, and this impacts actually directly to our students. So uh, explore uh, and expand your, your research into what makes uh, effective uh, and uh, efficient uh, uh, hybrid learning, uh, even learning in general, uh, happen to the students. Uh, and remember that uh, these new generations are different breed of, of, of people uh, and engage with them differently. Uh, and it's, it's the, this is, I, uh, I, to me, is high time for us to change our practices, uh, change our environment, so that then we can change our practices. All right, Thank all. you, Dr. Zahi. Uh, who wants to go next? I'll go last, Dr. Zahi. Dr. Farah will go last. All right, Dr. Mas. Okay, uh, so I think, uh, thank you. Actually, first and foremost, thank you for inviting me for this session. But I think regardless, uh, our beneficiaries are our student. Hello? Are you able to yes, hear me? I'm just looking at Dr. Zahir <laughs> fighting with the monkey. <laughs> That's hybrid learning. <laughs> That's really hybrid. His physical students are the monkey. Wrong. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> what I'm saying is like, okay, regardless, the beneficiaries are the students. So, uh, regardless whatever methods that we're using so what we want is like for the student to get the most and number two is uh i think our students are uh matched enough and we are able to empower them i think sometimes we do look don't look at them as a young young student they are big they are adults i even always uh, mention that in my class you are adults you are more than 18 you are allowed to vote for your country so you're allowed to vote and say for yourself. So you're supposed to be doing like a dark way. So I think we should empower them to be involved in the teaching. Not only, this is not only on us. This is also that like we have to discuss with them and ask them how we can be able to conduct this hybrid learning with them. Because they are the one who actually like benefit the most from this. All right, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mas. Dr. Juliana, 30 seconds from you. 
Yeah, I would like to echo what Dr. Ma said. Actually, it's very true. Um, um, this is something that uh, is doable. It's not that it's, it's, we can't do. It's just a matter of using the resources that we have or maybe adding uh, a few things here and there just to make it uh, uh, a bit more, you know, um, uh, um, okay, to be the be be back with I would say so. Um, uh, and then um, I'm pretty sure the students are really looking forward to have the opportunity to get um, um, a physical uh, class and, and don't forget those online as well. <laughs> so that's it. I think um, we can do it. Uh, there'll be challenges, but um, you just have to get feedbacks and try to improve it from there. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Juliana. Dr. Farah, you want to go last? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, a few things that I would like to share with the audience. Okay, uh, first one, do not forget that you will still need to use the spectrum uh, for, you know, sharing your assignments, your materials and so on. Okay, and do not forget to hit the record button. <laughs> so meaning that record your session uh, if possible. Okay, and then upload it to the spectrum. This is what um, University of Malaya is hoping that so that students who cannot synchronously be online with us on that day, they can watch the recordings later. Okay. Uh, secondly, I would also like to uh, highlight that uh, EDEC has published and uh, shared the online teaching and learning guideline version 4. Okay, you can find a lot of new information there. Although it the title is online course, it, it can also be, be used for hybrid learning. Okay, for example, we have added in the UM vaccination policy for clinically based courses. Okay, so if you are looking uh, of having students on site, you should also think about the vaccination policy that you have UM already um, brought. So uh, we also have example of SLT calculation for your class assessment. I did, if I'm not mistaken, one of the audiences said uh, how to do alternative assessment. Okay, so alternative assessment is strongly encouraged. Okay, jangan tinggalkan. Okay, you can go around it. Dalam buku um, online teaching and learning guideline, you will find some information on how to do it. Okay. Um, so you can find the SLT calculation there, how you can uh, use the SLT form to really calculate the weight of your assessment plus your synchronous and asynchronous activities for the students. So they are not going to be overburdened. Okay, third, we also put there the requirement to do responders e proctoring software if you are thinking about having final examination. Okay, so uh, and you can find that uh, there is another platform for your assessment or examination, which is spectrumexam.um.edu.my. Uh, this is not going to be discussed now, but you can take a look at that. And lastly, I would like to invite everyone to please uh, fill in the feedback form. Okay, your feedback form is very, very important. Please take a look at the chat box. Okay, we wanted to uh, compile all these comments, the questions, the feedback, and give it to the top management if possible. I'm going to do a report after this session, hopefully. So if you have any thoughts, we can compile it and, and give it to them. Okay, because we are not the decision makers. So perhaps what we are concerned about can be uh, voiced out to them as well. Okay, thank you, Dr. Azai, and thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, all the panels. Um, I do see Dr. Hafiza raising up. Dr. Hafiza, Dr. Suz, uh, shall, uh, I hope you don't mind. We extend this session a little bit. Patutnya dah habis, tapi, okay, I, I, won't, I won't disappoint. Dr. No, Suzani, Suzani? Yes, yeah, sorry, that's a quick question only. Uh, we don't have the check box enabled. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, perhaps uh, you sign in as guest code. That's why you yeah. sit. Uh, tak apa. Uh, I, get, I will get the uh, organizer to send emails to um, send and follow up email for yes. the... Um, uh, yeah, because it's not just me. My colleagues also can see the checks box. Yeah, yeah. okay. I think those are the ones who um, log in using the guest uh, account. Um, Dr. Dr. Hafizah, just uh, like it's, it's not really the, the guest account. It's, it's probably the um, using browser or uh, unupdated um, desktop uh, client. 
Okay, anyhow, I'll get the organizer to resend through email, yeah? And please uh, feed, uh, get your, put in your feedback there. Um, thank, you. thank you so much for the feedback. Uh, ada lagi ke Dr. Hafiza tadi tak ada eh? Okay, so with that, um, thank you so much for all the uh, input. Um, I wish we could have more time to gather more things from you and get proper interaction. Uh, we don't have enough time unfortunately. Gambar. But, uh, we are all here. Yeah, Dr. Farah? Gambar jangan lupa. <laughs> oh, okay, Nami Gambar. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, please switch on your camera in the meantime. I just want to say that um, uh, some of our colleagues in the faculty also raised this question, this, this concern. We have prepared all our um, learning materials digitally for our fully online mode uh, session. Let's use them. Let's reuse them and use the session. We, we, we employ the flipped. It doesn't mean we have to, when we do hybrid, we can't do flipped learning. We can still do hybrid as the face-to-face -face mode, but the, the whole thing is still flipped. You can still do that. So make full use of whatever materials we have prepared earlier, put it on Spectrum and make the platform, the hybrid session to be a discussion or picking up main points and discuss about that. I just want to bring that out um, to highlight that so that um, you don't feel that hybrid learning is a completely new thing. The hybrid part is just to address the face-to-face -face part, but the whole the whole thinking of how you deliver the spectrum, the materials, the um, assessment are still, you can still use whatever you have, uh, we have explored and we have found to be good during uh, the past few semesters. All right, with that, um, I formally end this session. Uh, we now go for picture. Um, I pass the floor to Umu or Sharifa to, to guide us on the picture session. Okay. Uh, give me a minute. Okay. Take a, a few times. Jaya, I need to set up something. Okay, sementara if uh, Sharifa set up, ada apa-apa komen? I can see Dr. Subar, Dr. Yazid, thank you for joining. Dr. Yazid sambil uh, latihan industri visit tu. Okay, uh, I will need to use the together mode. Okay. Okay, because the gallery, the large gallery mode is very blurry. Oh yeah, yeah. I should mention it, eh, 200, 230 something participants. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a record breaking. Okay, okay, yeah. ready everyone. Is everyone ready? One, two, three. Okay, good job. Okay, let me save that, and we take another one. So. Okay, one more time. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for attending, and I wish you all the best for the next semester for your hybrid learning sessions. Do share with us your thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, yeah. Our pleasure, our pleasure. <laughs> Terima kasih semua. Sama -sama. Thank you, Alex. Okay, very Mana gambar tu kau dalam grup kau? Terima kasih. 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 Ter